Hi, this is Gilles, the radio prepper. And yes, I'm using my, uh, what my girlfriend calls my foufoun microphone. <laughs> I'm not telling you what that means in French. Uh, but it's windy, so today I want to talk to you about kits, uh, kit building. Uh, lots of people uh, do not build kits and they think maybe it's too difficult. Um, they don't know electronics. And really, uh, that, shouldn't be, uh, that shouldn't dissuade you from doing so. Because really building a kit is just like putting a puzzle together. You just take the components, you identify them and you put them in the right spot. If you don't know electronics, you know, of course it's better if you learn a bit, but uh, not necessarily. You can very well build a kit without knowing much electronics. Now for prepping, radio prepping, they are really, uh, for HF you need a minimum of two bands. You need a daytime band and you guessed it, a nighttime band. And for this kit I chose uh, 20 meters, 14 megahertz, 14 to 14.35. And that's a great daytime band. It's a kit made by uh, Steve Weber, designed by Steve Weber and he does release uh, small batches of kits once in a while. This one had 50 available and I got one. Now even if you don't have one, it doesn't mean you can't build something else. Now the method used for this kit is surface mount components and that's pretty difficult. Most kits uh, use uh, what's called through hole components and that's much easier. Well, that's debatable, but the problem with surface mount components is that they're really, really tiny. But I really encourage you to build kits for the simple reason that the kits you build, you will not find them on the market. There is an exception, it's the uh, Weber MTR line from Steve Weber again you will find them at LNR Precision and those are already built. But there are many, many other kits uh, on the market for uh, awesome radios that you won't, you can't buy already made. And that's a very, very good reason to build those kits. And most of them are very small and that's what we want. We want radios that are light, uh, don't use much current on receive and transmit and are very easy to pack and tiny. You can put them in a bug out bag and be done with it. By the way, Steve Weber has a lot of kits available and uh, you can check them out. He has a few on uh, qrpkits.com and I've built a flurry of them. I don't know how many kits I've built from Steve, but uh, probably, uh, I don't know, uh, 10 maybe. And the MTR line is my favorite ones, uh, definitely. But uh, the new one, the Slop Bucket 2, is very interesting because it's 20 meters SSB and CW. So you get voice mode and Morse code, both, and that's really excellent. It's practically an ideal single band radio for, you know, survival radio. Uh, I built mine for 20 meters. Uh, that's because I have other radios on 40 meters, but if I had only one band that I could choose uh, for prepping, that would be 40 meters. Now, if I had two bands, it would be again a daytime and a nighttime band. So probably 20 meters and 80 meters, which is better for an NVIS, uh, near vertical incidence skywave, where you beam up your signal and it comes back down uh, in a regional pattern. All right, let's go build it and see what happens. Here's the kit. You have the uh, circuit board which is uh, pretty small for a uh, SSB radio. It's 91.4 millimeters by 99.2. Then you have the components, and of course, uh, they are surface mount components. They are very, very small. You have here the screen inside the bag and other components. Uh, all the, uh, the heat sink here and uh, jacks and antenna, uh, encoder, etc. And here we have the uh, capacitors, uh, toroids. So it's not a big kit. Um, I'm using a USB microscope, which is very useful for integrated circuits. Uh, you need something like that, really. And a flashlight to read tiny markings on the components. I have my uh, Hakko soldering station, which is uh, temperature controlled. And uh, I use tweezers, of course, for the components. Thin solder. A white ball and I'm also going to use a white plate. Now this is not 
the preferred method of uh, soldering components on a surface mount uh, kit. Uh, normally you would use a hot air gun and a heating plate, but I just don't have one. Also indispensable, of course, is a big uh, magnifying lens. Here, for instance, is a resistor, and it's ridiculously small. And I do have to solder this on both ends. And yes, there are markings on this. <laughs> I'm gonna have to use the microscope to see them. You can see it under the microscope. It's really, really tiny. You can see the marking there. This one is marked, I think, 510. And here are the pads on the circuit board. The way I do this is that I put a small drop of solder, just, just a dab. Uh, you really can't put too much. Then you place the uh, resistor on the pad. Then I'll take my soldering iron and uh, melt the blob. Just put it on and try to solder it properly and align it as best I can. Then I do the uh, other end. All right, I've done pretty well here. This is a few hours of work. All the uh, resistors and capacitors are in place. So now I'm going to start the uh, transistors. For the transistors, it's the same method. Just a tiny blob of solder on one pad. Then I align the uh, transistor, solder the pin, and align it as best I can. After that, I'll do the uh, other pins, and you have to be really quick here, so uh, you don't use too much solder. This one is the smallest integrated circuit of the whole kit, and it's going to be very difficult to solder. What I have to do is align it uh, the best I can, and drop a tiny blob of solder on one pad first. Uh, just like I did with the uh, resistors and that's not easy because it's really actually easy to put too much and uh, You'll see that's what happens here. So I have to remove a bit of solder here with my soldering iron Make sure that I don't have too much. Otherwise, I'll make a short. There we go. That's pretty nice Then I place the chip and I solder that one pin after that, I will solder the opposite pin on the other side so that uh, the chip remains aligned while I'm soldering the other ones. Let's try this one. Yep, very nice. Okay, so that's really good. Then I'll go on and uh, finish the other ones. And again, I have to be very careful not to make a short. So here is the uh, one pin on the top. Not very, not a good contact there, so I have to uh, put a little bit more solder, but not much at all. Okay, that should do it. Let's try the other one next to it. And whoop, okay, that happens. Uh, it will happen, I mean, that's inevitable. Uh, the way to remove the excess solder is to use a copper wick. And that's an indispensable tool here. You just place it on top of the solder of your blob and uh, melt it. The solder will be uh, taken by the wick, by, of course, a wick effect. Okay, not enough there. Let's do it again. And you'll see it should work pretty well. Okay, I'll do it on the other side. It's going to melt and uh, being uh, wicked away into the copper and you'll see here it starts melting i always burn my fingers when i do that with the, with the copper wick here we go very nice so here's another secret uh next to uh, the tiny one we just did uh, i just did uh, it's really easy that's a walk in the park really here you see very nice they're not so close together so much easier to do really all right, I almost forgot to film. <laughs> this is the uh, front of the board with the screen. And I'll show you the back. All completed. So I haven't checked it yet. Uh, you're going to share that with me. We'll see if this is going to work. Honestly, uh, this was a pretty difficult build, especially that tiny, tiny integrated circuit. So. I'm not really expecting it to work uh, first time out, but 
All right, let's give it a shot. Um, I'm going to plug it in. There we go. And yes, okay, we have something on the screen. That's the logo. And uh, let's see what happens next. It's supposed to be booting up and then doing something else. Maybe I have to press a button, I don't know. Time to look into the manual. Now, of course, this is only one third of the uh, build. Uh, there is the logical, the logic part, then the uh, transmission and the, uh, the transmitter and the receiver. I don't know if any of those work. Okay, I'm supposed to press the uh, enter switch on the encoder, so let's try that. Yes, okay. Well, 160 meters, no, that's not what I want. Uh, 40 meters. All right, so I set it up for 40 meters. At least we have a display now. Let's plug in a speaker and see, uh, and the antenna. Let's see if I can get any signals. I'm using a military connector here, a GC283U. That's because I have an awesome waterproof Talus speaker microphone. I'm getting a little bit of a hiss, so that means the audio amplifier does work. Well guys, I get no reception. Ah, no reception, and uh, if I TX in SSB mode, I get no modulation. Now in CW, it does transmit, but uh, I don't hear a side tone. I hate troubleshooting. So sometimes kits don't work the first time around, and that's what happened here. Usually it takes me quite a while to get back to them, but this one I really want to finish because it's a great radio. Uh, in the meantime, I have another kit that just showed up, so I'll be busy on that one. So uh, I'll get back to it and I will fix it. Have a good one.